Hi, I'm DJ Ware. Today I'd like to look at the Stack Overflow 2023 Developer Survey. Some reasons why you might be interested in this is if you're a developer, of course, it will tell you what kinds of things that maybe you should adjust in your career path. If you're just a user of things like Linux or whatever, this would also be important for you because this will show you the technologies that are coming. Also, what areas you can expect to see getting improved over time with Linux. So there's, there's a lot of benefits here for all of us. So let's dig in and take a look at it. I suppose that the first place we should start, whenever we're talking about surveys, we need to kind of understand how old they are, what was their reason for being developed, and so forth. So this is an annual survey that's done by probably one of the most popular places to go to get answers to questions, whether or not they're technical or maybe they're beginner's questions or they're coding questions. That's the site where people go to get answers. So in I think they did the planning of this over the April, probably goes all the way back to January time frame, and then they closed out and started collecting data in May of 2023. I believe the, it went from May 2nd to the 19th to collect responses from people that were interested in responding. It was a large survey, about 50 questions or so. And they had over 90,000 developers respond to it. This has been quite a while, I mean, since the pandemic, that they've had this many respondents to the survey. So I want to I want to kind of highlight some key things. Uh, yeah, we're not going to go through the whole thing, but I'll leave you a link below where you can find the, the survey and you can look at the things that interest you. So I suppose the, the first place we should start is uh, the overview itself. So th they've been collecting data, yeah, for the past 13 years. And there's been some interesting trends and there have been some interesting uh, technologies that have sat where they are for at least 11 years. And we'll, we'll talk about some of those. So they kind of break this down into blocks of, of different areas. Like they talk about the profile. I'm not going to cover this so much. I mean, they're, uh, they say they, the, the learning number of people that are identifying themselves as just starting to learn how to code between, has grown from uh, 70 to 80% since last year. So that's that's pretty significant, a 10% growth year over year. Uh, they also found that uh, respondents under 18 are the most frequently selected online resources uh, for videos, blogs, forums, and so forth. And then they break it into different technology areas, different segments for tools, asynchronous tools, programming languages, web frameworks, and then they have this one here. These, these are all admired and desired tools. So in the past, they, they kind of broke this up into two different things. This year, they have kind of put together these charts. And it took me a little while to figure out what they were really meaning by it. But I think I understand it now. <laughs> I hope so. And then they've added, uh, of course, with the focus on AI. AI has its own topic area, as you can see over here. The developer profiles have to do with uh, education. So as you would expect, most have at least a BA. Some of them are, you know, less than that. And some of them are more than that. The ages are. So in the past, I think most of the developers that responded to this fell into the, the 10 to 14 year category. And we've now seen an influx of higher numbers in the five to nine year category. That's about all you can draw from that. I mean, there's no, you can't just infer that says, well, programmers in general aren't lasting as long. You can't say that because it looks like a lot of younger people are more interested in coding, which is great. That's great. But what technologies kind of are key here? So, 
in the most popular uh, categories, of course, JavaScript, I think, has sat here for 11 years. It's one of the ones that's kind of been on top. And then you can break this down by professional, the beginning crowd, and then other. I'm not sure what that is, but it looks like here on the other category, Python is more popular than the others. So that's a shift. And it's also a shift here. Python, I think last year was in fourth place or something like that. And I've always found this kind of weird that SQL is thrown in with uh, other traditional scripting or programming languages. SQL to me, yeah, it's a, it's a language, but it's really more for data query. So it's, it's really a structured query language for data. I don't really consider it a programming language or even a, I guess it is a scripting engine, but you know, it's more specialized. It's meant to retrieve data out of a database, but uh, to, I mean, whatever. I mean, it's fine to have it on there. Rust has come up. Uh, I mean, if, I remember last year, it, there was a lot of interest, but there wasn't a lot of people using it. Well, that's not true anymore. 13% of the people are using Rust, and I suspect that Rust will continue to climb year over year here. So I don't know as to when it will displace the more traditional operating system development languages, which are those three, or not when that will occur, but I'm sure it will happen. Databases, Postgres, uh, SQL is by far uh, the most popular to use. Uh, and that is a shift because my SQL was on top last year. So that's the professional users that are switching. I don't know. I don't have the other one in front of me, but I wonder if it's because of the decline of Oracle licenses is the reason for that. Uh, Postgres SQL, of course, is, uh, is, is compatible with the way Oracle's database works. This is the open source version of Oracle. They have a tendency to use MySQL over some of the others. So, so what about, um, let's see if we find any more technologies. Oh, cloud. Amazon is still on top as the most frequently used uh, cloud platform, followed by Azure, Google Cloud, and professional developers. That goes up, as you would expect. You know, the one thing about cloud environments, once you start using one, yeah, you have a tendency to stay on it because the cost to migrate to another one and be able to get the same feature set probably takes more work or more or more development on your part to be able to do it. So they're not generally easy to migrate between. I wonder why that would be. Uh, as far as web for, uh, frameworks, Node.js, React, jQuery. Let's look at admired and desired. Uh, so this has changed a little bit. They've, they've broken this up into what programming, scripting, and markup languages and they've created these kind of a, a barbell chart, which shows desired on the blue and admired on the top. And so this is so this is the, the desired is the number of people that are using the technology. These would the admired falls into the category of those people that would like to use it. So you get down here to Rust, there's a lot more people who would like to use it than are which is interesting. And the narrow this gap, the more people uh, are desiring it that are using it. So I guess the ranking comes out by the number of people that, that uh, actually answered it that way. Databases, Postgres, 42% are using, 71% want to use. AI search, chat GPT, look how narrow that is. So the people that want to use it are using it. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, I mean, it's only like a 2% spread between there. So, yeah, I would say that the people that responded to this, the ones that want to are using it. Um, there we go. There's GitHub. And again, same thing here. 74% are using it. 70. Wow. There's less people that want to use it than are using it. 
So maybe some people want to move away from it. I don't know. So the first one is kind of uh, kind of a question about, okay, so who's using AI currently in their development? So 43% of all the respondents said we are. Uh, 26, 20, about 25.5% say no, nope, but we plan to. And then 29% say no and no plans. Uh, other professionals... It goes up, so more more people are using in the professional sphere, and twenty five percent plan to add on about the same. Yeah, it's about the same, and then learning to code. Obviously, there's more interest there. What about what about things like do you trust it? So, twenty seven percent think that it's very favorable. Forty eight percent say it's favorable. Now, one of the things that Stack Overflow said here is that this probably has to do with people not liking change. I disagree with that. I think that you find more people down here be, because they're skeptical of it uh, and, and they're not convinced that it's going to be, it's, it's going to work for their company environment. I don't think it has anything to do with, with change. Maybe I'm interjecting my own personal thoughts. Um, I'm not afraid to use it. In fact, I am. It comes down to value, right? What are the benefits? And so what the respondents said is they think that 32% of them think that it helps improve their productivity. Uh, 25% says it's helping them to speed up their learning. 25% says it has greater efficiency. Now, the last time I checked on chat GPT, it its uh, accuracy was a little low. <laughs> so and that's the next question. Uh, yeah, uh, highly trust 2%. <laughs> I would, yeah, I would be there. I'd be there. Somewhat trust 39. Yeah, it, it gets some things wrong, uh, really wrong, but it's pretty noticeable. The one thing I have noticed about these tools is that most of them are really bad at math, terrible at math. Uh, in fact, so yeah, then we have 30% neither trust nor distrust, 21% and distrust or highly distrust. So who would, and only about 40,000 people answered on this one. So where do they see it being used to write code? 82%. And that's currently using, interested in using, which is interesting. Well, yeah, they're pretty saturated here. 82% are using it. Uh, so, yeah, there wouldn't be a great big growth there, would there? 4% uh, are not u interested. Debugging, let's see, 48% documenting code, okay. Learning about code bases, testing code, project planning. I don't see anything here about decision making. I see some, these are more automation type of functions. I guess the last one is the one I always like to cover is who's the highest paid uh, developer type. So what's interesting is, do we have any, no, not really. There's some new, there's some new titles like developer advocate. Okay, so here we have Rust. You'll notice that this could be part of the reason is that they're lesser experienced developers. So they're, you know, they're not going to command quite as high a salary as someone who's more experienced or more tenured. Uh, this up here in uh, Zig is by far the most highly paid. Uh, Zig is, looks to me like it's kind of a replacement for C, C++. And then Erlang is a functional programming language. It's used heavily in both AI and high-performance computing. So you, you will see it in both. Some of my impressions are, I mean, not surprisingly, AI has a lot of interest in the, uh, in the, in the realm of uh, more traditional roles like testing, Q&A, DevOps. Those, those are not as high in focus as... And, and this always happens whenever there's new technologies that come in, like AI. The budget is going to shift away from, you know, more what they would consider more legacy types of applications or um, 
our skills and fund this new thing that they have never funded before. So if you're in kind of a legacy environment, be careful that you don't get trapped there. I mean, that's a very easy thing to have happen. Uh, you can get typecast as a DevOps engineer. Maybe you're bored of it. Maybe you want to do something different. The longer you stay there, the more likely that will be your job for life. So, And also watch out for uh, areas that dead end you. Uh, it's very easy to get shunted off into a dead end, meaning that there's no advancement past the point where you might reach. Uh, it could be a, a senior engineer, but you'll never make it to a principal or a senior principal engineer. So yeah, I mean, you can get siloed off pretty easily and uh, you got to be willing to make the jump. You have to be willing to look at what's going on and move over to technologies that interest you. Now, I'm not suggesting that you switch over to a technology just because it's new. Now, I mean, I, you don't want to be in a bore. You don't want to be bored to death, do you? And working in something that you really don't like and don't want to do. So, uh, is is salary always the main concern? Well, sometimes yes, but be careful. Just because if they're I'll give you an example. It was back around the 2000 time frame. COBOL programmers were making $300 an hour. And that was simply because there wasn't enough people to make the Y2K changes that they needed to have done uh, and, and before they crossed the millennium boundary. Be careful. What a corporation is willing to pay in one year may drop precipitously in the next year because they no longer need that resource anymore. So again, don't get trapped in that bucket either. With that, that's all I had for today. Uh, I'd like to spend for a moment and thank my Patreon and also the channel members. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. Also, thank you for watching this video to the, to the end. I appreciate that too. That also helps. And I hope to see you all in the next video and bye for now.